The Atari 2600 is a venerable old beast of a console. How could it benefit from Wi-Fi? Well, that's a question the plus cart attempts to answer. It is mainly a flash cart though, just to be straightforward. It lets you play games you download. Mine came in an attractively minimalist cardboard box and cost me about 40 quid, including shipping. So let's plug this thing in and see what it does. Switching to my 2600 Junior for this, it's got a slightly better picture. And setting it up is fairly easy. Easy. You just need to connect it to your Wi-Fi. You can do it manually on the 2600 itself with the joystick or you can put it into Wi-Fi connect mode and connect another device like your phone and configure it that way on the web server built into the cartridge. Those are words I never thought could make sense, but it is, it is fairly easy. No harder than setting up any other smart device. And with that, the original Atari 2600 comes crashing into the 21st century, and now we've got three different ways we can play games with the power of Wi-Fi. And that's really what this is about. Yep, it's an EverDrive flashcard type deal, but it's got a Wi-Fi module instead of a memory card, and you download games that are stored somewhere else. So yes, you can play your own ROM files that you yourself have shared with the device, that's a bit weird, I'll show you how you upload stuff later, but you can play them by selecting them and they're then downloaded onto the cartridge and off you go. Compatibility is really good, basically all the classic 2600 games are supported, even Pitfall 2 which uses a special chip in the cartridge, and the Supercharger games as well which originally came on cassette. I think the only stuff it won't run are some of the fancy modern homebrew games which use the DPC Plus chip. But other than that, it's going to work and yes, the Amazing Hero runs just fine and all the other original games from back in the golden era of Atari. But you don't need to rely on supplying your own games for this because it lets you connect to a massive archive of publicly shared ROM files. Just another option on the menu, but it makes the idea of uploading your own ROM files almost redundant, because here, well, there's basically every Atari 2600 game ever. All the commercial games seem to be here, both the USA NTSC releases and the European PAL ones, plus bootlegs and all the other miscellaneous stuff. There's also a very large selection of homebrew games, demo scene stuff and every kind of hack, including, I'm pleased to see, a very large selection of PAL 60Hz conversions. Which, if you don't know, let you play original games at the full frame rate on a PAL console, and well, even if you went on a massive ROM downloading spree, you'd struggle to come up with a more comprehensive collection of games, and it's all in a nicely organised form. All available for you to, well, basically stream from the server, but what do you do if you don't have a Wi-Fi connection? What happens when zombies are marauding through Wigan once again? Well, there is a third way to play games. You can store them on the cartridge and play them offline. To show you that, I'll first need to introduce you to the Plus Store. And well, stick with me, this gets a bit confusing. So this here is what you'll need to interact with to add your own ROMs of any kind. And yes, you will need to set up an account to do this, but that is fairly easy and it is free. There's a desktop client for this apparently, but I've stuck with the web client via a web browser, which is what you can see here. That seems to be fine for what I need. Once you're logged in, you can add your games or whatever as ROM files to the My ROMs folder. Anything you put in here will then be available to play on your cartridge from the My ROMs option in the menu. But they aren't stored on the cartridge permanently, they're just downloaded as you play them. So yeah, confusing as it is, to make files available for this cartridge, you need to upload them to this Plus store first, then they can be played, but again, not stored permanently on the cartridge. To do that, you need to put your ROM files into the offline folder here. Yep, select what you want, 
put it in here, then back on your 2600 with your plus cart, you choose the download offline ROMs option, and then the games are downloaded to your cartridge. They're then stored on the cartridge's inbuilt flash memory, available permanently until you wipe them off, and even if these guys are chewing their way through the fibre optics, you'll still be able to play them without a Wi-Fi connection. There is another catch though, you've only got about 800 kilobytes of storage available. Now yeah, given that 2600 games are mostly very tiny, between 2 and 16 kilobytes, that's still space for quite a few games, but well, not a full library. If you're looking for the ultimate Atari 2600 flash cartridge for your doomsday bunker, this is probably not going to be the right choice. Is there any other benefit to having Wi-Fi in this cartridge though? Well, yes there is, there are some other things that do take advantage of this connectivity, at least potentially. There's a few specially designed projects you can find in the public ROM section, most of which don't seem to work that well. There's this news ticker which, even if it wasn't totally garbled, would be in German, which isn't all that much use to me. I don't know, maybe this is German, it's just a bold new orthography. I don't know. But one thing that definitely does work are the High Score Club ROMs. These are games that have been modified to report your score back to the main server and put you on a leaderboard, and my score in Enduro is not going to put me at the top of the rankings, but here at number 63 I can at least confirm that this is working. There really is a good selection of games available for this, most of the classics you'd expect as good candidates, I think probably, and some homebrews too, which is nice. It seems to be relatively active too, with new scores being added by users pretty regularly, and new games being made available too. There's also another potentially interesting feature of the Plus Car, and that's the Paid ROMs section. At the moment this is only in demo mode, it's not actually working, but the idea is that there could be a way to pay for games. Plenty of homebrew games on many platforms do have paid versions, and even if it's just the game file you're buying, so this is something that people might be interested in seeing implemented. As a content creator myself, I do understand why some game developers might want to do this, and well, there are thankfully some people out there who do like to support these sorts of endeavours by laying out a bit of cash. Presumably no one has actually come forward to set up anything for sale on the Plus Cart store, so this remains just potential for the moment. Not a thing you can really use, but hey, maybe in the future. That, I think, covers most of what this thing can do, so now it's probably time to head for some sort of conclusion. And overall, the Plus Cart is well implemented. The menus look good and are fairly easy to navigate, considering the limitations of the home system. Yeah, text really is a problem for the 2600. It's fairly easy to set up and the Wi-Fi connection does seem pretty stable most of the time. The only real problem that I had was if you want to change games, you're supposed to be able to hold right on the joystick and press reset at the same time to get back to the main menu. This doesn't always work though, not in every game, so you have to switch off the power and that seems to throw the connection off too. You don't lose settings, but sometimes you do need to power cycle a few times for the connection to come back up. That's the only usability problem I've had with this, and it's not been a huge issue for me. I've used plenty of other devices that have been more fussy about connectivity over the years. The other main issue that might put you off, though, is the whole idea of the Plus Store. When I first heard of this Wi-Fi Atari cart, I assumed there would be some way of connecting it to my local network directly somehow, but it turns out there isn't. That's what piqued my interest originally. SD card based flash carts can be a bit fiddly. Loading them up once in a while is no problem, but doing it often is a bit of a hassle if, like me, you're always trying out new stuff, homebrews, hacks or whatever, or if you're developing something, whatever you want to try on the real hardware. 
I thought this might be a good solution. You could just drag and drop a ROM file into a folder and you can get it running on the actual machine as easily as running it on an emulator. The Plus Store frustrates that a bit and adds extra steps, bringing back some of the hassle. There is a way with the Nextcloud app to connect to a folder on your computer, which then automatically uploads to the Plus Store, but there really doesn't seem to be any way you can just cut it out altogether. Whatever you do with this cartridge, it seems to have to go through a middleman. There isn't a way to keep it completely on your local network. The other problem with the Plus Store is what happens if it goes down temporarily or permanently. Even with huge platforms like Steam, there's questions about what happens if the parent company gets into trouble. What about this? With the best will in the world, it's not hard to think of lots of things that could happen to make this device useless. It would also be great if you could just select what you want to store permanently from the cartridge menu as you go through it. See something you like, whether from your own My ROMs folder or from the public ROMs and just choose to save it permanently to the cartridge. That could make the offline facility much simpler to use. Despite this, I do really love this thing. It's not expensive. It's a novelty. I love the idea of the high score club. I love the potential of Atari 2600 games with Wi-Fi functionality. I love the massive selection of public ROM files, which does seem to be regularly updated. Is it legal? Well, maybe not, but I'm guessing no one is really that bothered these days. If you just want to play some Atari games, the Uno card that this is based on does use an SD card and it might be a lot less trouble for most people. And there's also the Atari Age Harmony card. Neither of these is really expensive or hard to get hold of. And the three companies in a trench coat that are passing as Atari these days do have a whole range of t-shirts and also some ways to play their games, most of which are going to be easier than messing about with this stuff. But on the other hand, if you're the kind of person who watches my channel, well, you'll probably share my enthusiasm for this device. Just the ridiculous idea of it, the whole wood grain Wi-Fi silliness of it. I'll put links below to where you can get one of these, probably. It's one of those small scale things where availability, well, comes and goes. You can even make your own, actually. It's open source and uses off-the-shelf parts. There does seem to be some version of the Plus card with an SD card slot built in, sort of the best of both worlds. There isn't loads of information about this anywhere, but this eBay seller in the USA, I think, has them on offer. If anyone out there knows anything more about this though, please do let me know in the comments. So that's it for now. Goodbye. Yes, thank you to my wonderful patreon -y. Patreons, thank you. Thank you, thank you, your help does make a difference, and if you too would like to join them, there is a link below. And I will say thank you for watching, and goodbye.